Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and I'm going to talk today about a book that falls a good bit outside my usual reading books and styles like Booker nominated, um, didn't win and probably there are reasons why I probably didn't win but one that I desperately want to talk about and that is Glory by Novala Bulawayo. I mean aside from just having him one of these the most beautiful covers that I've ever got there's a lot to delve into and talk about and I'm going to try and get to the bottom of my feelings about it because this is a book that is is conflicting this is a book that I soft DNF'd at one point and then picked back up and well let's start off with telling you what it's about or what it sets out to do like a lot of, a lot of Booker nominated books it seems to me it's very much lies in a political or world event and in this case it's the fall of the Robert Mugabe a government in Zimbabwe and in a lot of ways the whole book's about kind of looking backwards and forwards as to kind of the taking over of the power the falling about of power the kind of new governments that are set aside but then looking at criticizing other parts of world politics and and just generally regimes and political constructs now you may have turned off already but the big conceit of this book or the selling point if you want uh, that a lot of people will talk about is the fact that it's anthropomorphized so we have characters that are represented here as animals and for me this is one of the big questions of the book is why some of them are very on the nose Mugabe himself is a horse an old horse sort of makes sense you even have Trump appear in this book as a baboon makes sense the soldiers that were working and holding up the regime are dogs makes sense things that don't make sense are the fact that these animals are driven about in cars they live in a very human-esque world and one of the things that I'll hopefully talk about and kind of try and wrap up for you is kind of my feelings on why if you're going to set the book in a human world why have them be animals at all and what were you, were you seeking to do because this story while it's about Zimbabwe is about a country called Jidada with a da and another da everything's sort of obscured from that direction and is that it's not total allegory and not total one for one and personally speaking I didn't know enough in detail about that regime and the fall of that regime or the rise of that regime to really ever make sense of whether what I was getting was was one to one or not but what we did get in the book was kind of a sort of disjointed telling of different bits of it so the start of it tells the fall of the regime of the old horse losing power and it's it's one of those things that I don't really think these are spoilers to talk about because there were events that happened but the fall of, of his regime then we go to the effect of when the regime took over about contrasting you know colonialization uh, with freedom nationalism all of that kind of stuff and looking at the effect of what that what that had in the big sense in terms of the country but also in terms of the small communities and the people that were on the ground there what happened in the wake of that in a lot of cases some of the very harrowing and very personal things that happened in those some of those books are some of the most challenging to read but also the most gripping and captivating parts of the book where the story becomes very personal in nature and then also talking about you know in the advent of a regime change and people fighting for you know power etc what does that look like who takes over from the next person over what does it look like and it's sort of abuses of power and actually what ultimately getting power of a country and an economy means it's a very critical book of a lot of the stages in here not so much in being preachy or in terms of basically saying this is right or this is wrong it doesn't much more subtly than that it, it talks about through allegory characterization through metaphor and one of the ways in which it kind of does this I think is one of the uses of these animals because when you can talk about animals and animals dying out and disappearing when they're describing in the book that a that a form of butterfly has been killed out and made extinct you go oh well butterflies all right that's mad but not so sad and yet you contrast that they actually think well actually what they're talking about here is ethnic cleansing and what is a throwaway line in terms of talking about butterflies becomes a completely horrific line in terms of putting it in a broader context in a real context and these parts of the book are, are wildly successful 
uh, the, these stories of personal nature and when you as the reader can make those connections and say oh, wow well what that means and use the intelligence of your reader it's something i talk about an awful lot you don't need to spell it out for them you just put the lines in there bad parts of the book is that it's not always readable and that may be a bit unfair because i think a lot of language is beautiful it's even the use of of language and native words or colloquialism words like tholakuthi that kind of appears randomly within sentences tholakuthi that you can kind of put in your own sentences after a while once you get a hundred pages through or so it, it starting makes sense and the, the the post is lyrical style but then it will jump to kind of representing a lot of the conversations through social media so i'll do a lot of a little chapter of twitter posts of people's reactions to certain events that are happening within the book again not for judgmental but to kind of show the spread of opinion that's coming out then it'll go and tell very personal you know testimony about things that happen to people and so the f- book feels caught up and then it jumps back forward in time every now and again so it never you never really get into rhythm and at certain points you'll feel like oh i feel like i've lost the run of the book you'll put it down i see an awful lot of people that would be frustrated with it and certainly i was at times too but then you think about well what is the book really about what is the book trying to say what are the big themes that that come out and i'm, I'm going to read i'm going to take a passage from basically the middle of the book and it's talking about a character that's writing the book within with, within it but they are quoted and it says if i don't write this book then one day animals calling themselves the real liberators and true patriots will call us ugly names and then erase us from the story of the very country we sacrificed so much for because now that the war is over many will be perceived to be of the wrong ethnic group the wrong clan the wrong gender the wrong clique the wrong politics the wrong whatever else they decide constitutes authentic judadiness if i don't write then who will i blame when i wake up one day to find myself in the belly of a crocodile that calls itself history that devours the stories of everyone else and goes on to speak for us and at the heart of it i think that's an awful lot of what the book is about and illustrating to us again this isn't spoilers to say but we live in a world in politics where people will have catchphrases people will call a set of policies or within a name or otherwise or try and brand it in a certain way but people's actions and the messages that they tell can be warped and distorted but ultimately things like writing things like art things like creative process things that are being maligned very much in modern society are still ha- still have power and still have much more power than that transient nature of publications twitter news cycles slogans all of those things they carry real weight and power and those are the things that we can rally around as a society and as a group of people and i think at the heart of it this is why reading glory was such a, a very rewarding experience for me it's because through the stories that are told in here through the testimony through some of the the things that happen there's a real powerful message in here there are times when the book will lull up and down and even given its fractured nature it probably needs something to tie it all together and give it a common theme and well isn't that another reason to kind of anthropomorphize things to give it a common theme to put it together to kind of say this is what this story is about and that's my review of glory I've tried to kind of give you enough to talk about why you should read it because a lot of people have read it and went well that was a waste of time whereas I'm I'm trying to give you what the nuts and bolts of what you may get out of this book if you invest your time in it especially when you're talking about a place that's foreign especially when you're talking about a world that maybe you don't know an awful lot about this is glory this is Novala Bulawayo's work and don't look goofy i am very glad that i read it if you've read the book let me know if you haven't or you're interested to ask more questions about the book certainly let me know, in the, know down in the comments and i'll speak to you again soon in the channel I'll speak to you soon take care bye